Hi guys, I hope we are uh, all okay. In today's session, allow us to look at a theory part of our business data analytics. This is uh, for Casnet, and uh, we'll be analyzing some questions, not all questions per se, in what was uh, tested in December 2022, as well as we'll be looking at the pilot paper. Basically, in this session, I just want to guide you on the best way that you can always tend to answer these questions because we are all aware that these are multiple choices question so it will be very critical that whatever selection that you're having you must be very sure and like uh, the other papers in this case would we'll be having like marking for workings or rather marks for workings because it is only one selection that you love to pick so in today's session i want us to look at a sample of other questions and by the way we also have a revision companion Basically, this is a summary of uh, question and answers relating to business data analytics, which you can now find it in our online store. Or better still, you can always reach us on the number indicated here and we'll always guide you on how you can access this revision companion. Basically, it has, uh, it has taken us some time, of course, for research and all that. But right now, this revision companion is uh, ready for you guys. Yeah. So let us jump and see some of the questions and how you're supposed to answer the same. And the format that we'll be having, the same case is also presented basically in our, in our revision companion. Let us jump and see what we were expected to do in these questions. Yeah, so basically looking at uh, these uh, past paper questions, which we mentioned that uh, we'll be looking at some of the questions and basically guide you guys on how to always uh, go about it. We can confirm that uh, at this point, these are uh, December 2022. I'm having section one. Section one basically has 40 marks and 40 marks this basically theory, the first 20 questions, the first 20 questions, the first 20 questions basically are uh, theory, which are very essential. And section two, which is basically the practical area, which are 60 marks. The same case also applies to what you're having here in uh, the pilot paper, section one, 40 marks, all this bit. So we are going to look at sample, some of the question and uh, the main uh, objective of this class is basically to guide you guys on how you can always tend to go about uh, the questions and answering them theory bit. Because if I told you a talk of 40 marks theory, and recall that there are multiple choices question. So you must be very keen in whatever answer that you're giving. You can't just close your eyes and start marking A, B, C like the way you used to do probably at uh, your primary level, right? So at this point, uh, basically, we just have to be very keen. We just have to be very, very keen. So we're going to look at some of uh, the random questions in uh, December 2022 and uh, as well as the pilot paper so that we can learn how we are supposed to answer this question. So allow me to jump to basically, can go to question number two. Question one, I'd already answered it, and I think we have the video here on YouTube. Uh, question two, a very interesting uh, part, like these are what you are asked, which of the following would be more appropriate to replace the question mark in the following diagram? We am given machine learning, we're having hacking skills, we're having substantive research, and we're having mathematics and statistics. So the choices given here, we're having choice A, which is data analysis, choice B, data science, choice C, statistical inference, and choice D, predictive modeling. So given such a question, we want to basically identify what should replace that question mark that you're seeing there. At this point, my good students will find that uh, it is very critical that also, uh, I know it might be somehow uh, kind of uh, new, but the knowledge of data science here will also come very effective because the whole idea will just be guided on, uh, uh, will be able to realize what data science entails. So if uh, at this point, uh, I were you, the correct answer would have been data science because you'll find that it is on the data science that we're going to find all these elements of machine learning, hacking skill, mathematics, and statistics, and substantive research. 
So based on the diagram given below, below uh, data science would be the most appropriate answer to replace the question mark. Uh -huh. These are the reasons. You'll find that machine learning requires a combination of hacking skills. Machine learning basically requires a combination of hacking skills, uh -huh. mathematics, statistics, and substantive research to be successful. And data science covers all of these areas. So you'll find that uh, data science basically involves using statistical and computational methods to extract knowledge and insights from data. It also includes data preparation, data visualization, and data communication skills. So therefore, you'll find that uh, uh, data science is a comprehensive field that encompasses all the components required for machine learning. So therefore, in this case, the correct answer will have been part uh, B. So in our case here, we're having part B as our correct answer. Mm -hmm. Now, that is uh, basically in relation to uh, data science, or rather question number two. So B will replace the question mark there. Then in that case, maybe I will also want us to uh, check. You'll find that such a question, you must have uh, gone through your notes for you to answer the correct answer. Or better still, but you must also be having a knowledge, even if you have to pick just your answer. You'll have to pick one that will comprise of all this. So the only secret is for you to be very good, for you to be very good in, a, in your notes, for you to be very, very good in your in your notes. Uh -huh. Then, uh, of course, uh, we can also select uh, basically all these, all these solutions. You have them in our revision companion. But at this point, I want us to pick a very technical question as well and see how we will reason together. Yeah, like in this case, look at question number seven, for example. In this question number seven, you're asked, Ms. Dare Mungare is a chief finance officer of Modern Company Limited. She is using data analytics in estimating future risks that make company that, uh, that the company is facing and also cash budgeting scenario analysis. Let's read it again. We are told that Ms. Dare Mungare is the chief finance officer of Modern Company Limited, right? She's using data analytics in estimating future risks that the company is facing and also cash budgeting. With scenario analysis, right? By carrying out, by carrying out, by carrying out risk management, by carrying out risk management and cash budgeting, she's applying what? Number one, we are having aspect of uh, predictive analytics for risk management and cash budgeting. Predictive analytics for risk management and prescriptive analytics for cash budgeting. Predictive analytics for cash budgeting and prescriptive analytics for risk management. Prescriptive analytics for risk management and cash budgeting. So at this point, my good students, uh, you just have to be very good on the concept and the notes that we also have, the theory area for business data analytics. Because ideally here, you can't answer this question well if at all you don't know what you're answering. And for you to know, you must have gone through the notes. For you to know, you must have gone through through the notes. So in this case, it will be important, first of all, for us to basically understand when you're talking about predictive anal analytics, prescriptive analytics, ideally, what do we mean? So those are some of the questions that we must always tend to ask ourselves. So briefly, even before we go through this question, I want us to go to our notes, right? Remember the notes that Mwadimu shared? Uh, these are the notes that uh, we shared. I believe they are very visible. Mm -hmm. These are basically uh, just a moment. Yeah, these are the notes that uh, we shared. I believe that uh, they are very visible. So if you can check uh, these notes of ours, uh, we have all these notes, but there you can get them. Uh, where we have uh, everything in relation to what you're doing now. Uh, I just want to go to basically where we have uh, the types of data analytics. Basically, these are just types of data analytics that you must always tend to what to have. So on types of data analytics, you're having predictive data analytics. This is what is likely to happen, right? 
where we are talking of uh, basically uh, predictive data and uh, predictive data analytics may be the most commonly used category of data analytics where basically whatever that you want to do you just want to identify basically what will happen in future right prescriptive analysis uh, analytics this is what should be done where asked diagnostic data analytics why did it happen so you'll find that if you don't have these notes clearly uh, you there's no way that you can answer that question there's no way that you can answer that question so it is very important that you must have a go through the notes for you also to be able to understand what the examiner is asking right so on that note these are what you're going to do let let us go to that question and see so, so at this point my good students that is clearly like i just have to be very good in your notes so like in this case uh, when you are talking of uh, predictive analytics my good students what you should understand is that uh, predictive analytics basically involves using historical data to identify patterns and make predictions about future events, right? This is now what you normally refer to as predictive uh, analytics. Basically, involves using historical data to identify patterns and make predictions about the future events. Whereas prescriptive analytics, you'll find that uh, it, is, it basically involves using data to provide recommendation or actions to optimize business outcomes, right? We just want to provide basically recommendation or actions to optimize the business outcomes. So in this case of ours, we need to identify what was uh, Ms. Dare Mongare using. In this case, we need to identify what was Ms. Dare Mongare using. So based on our choices here, where choice A, we have predictive analytics for risk management and cash budgeting, predictive analytics for risk management and prescriptive analytics for cash budgeting, predictive analytics for cash budgeting and uh, prescriptive analytics for risk management, prescriptive analytics for risk management and cash budgeting. So the best choice here would be A. A would be the best choice based on what you understand on predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics. Why? You'll find that Tramolimo is saying that uh, choice A, predictive analytics for risk management cash budgeting, simply because at this point you've agreed that predictive analytics involves using historical data to identify patterns and make predictions about future events. So in this case, we find that uh, Ms. Daria Mongare is using data analytics to estimate future risks that the company is facing, right? And cash budgeting with scenario analysis, which will basically involve analyzing historical data to predict potential future risks and developing cash budgets with different scenarios to plan for potential outcomes. So you'll find that the best choice would have been, would be choice A, would be choice A, would be choice A. Because first of all, you'll find that pre prescriptive analytics in this case, we've said that uh, involves using data to provide recommendations or actions to optimize business outcomes. So in this scenario, you'll find that there's no indication that Ms. Dari Mongari is using what? Prescriptive analytics. So therefore, the correct answer will have been choice A. So in that case, you'll find that, again, you can't answer this question unless at least you're having an idea of what you're having. And that is, of course, after you've gone through, through the notes. Then you can check uh, question number eight here, where we are asked, like, uh, based on the principles of the unified ethical frame, for big data analytics, which of the following applies to the principle of fairness, to the principle of fairness. So number one, choice A, we have thinking through the potential impacts of our data use on all interested parties. Choice B, sustainability of the data over time. Choice C, transparency and inclusivity of the data. Choice D, data benefiting both the business and customers. So in this case, again, you'll find that for you to be very uh, accurate, as much as uh, this question was open to any other person, and if you reason in between the lines, even if you've not go through the notes, you can identify the best choice for this answer, the best choice for this question. But I'll advise that at least you should have gone through the notes which you have them, which in this case, ideally, we are talking over the principles 
of uh, basically we normally talk of uh, aspect of uh, the principles in a unified ethical frame for big data analytics. At this point, we normally tend to have, of course, five principles, which number one, we normally refer to it as number one. That is, of course, the uh, principle of benefit. Number two, principle of transparency. Number three, principle of sustainability. And number four, of course, we normally term it as a principle of fairness. So in this case, based on this question of powers, the examiner was very specific here. Yeah? He asked us, like in this case, based on the principle in the Unified Ethical Framework, UEF, for big data analytics, which of the following applies to the principle of fairness? If it were you, my dear students, assuming you've never studied the uh, BDA notes, theory part, which selection will you have selected as your best choice based on your understanding of fairness? Based on your understanding of fairness. I was very impressed with one of my students uh, in a business data analytics class, which you are revising this question. And uh, majority of them, yes, they had an idea, but this student was uh, very brilliant. Her name is Lisa. She gave, uh, based on the uh, aspect of uh, just thinking in between the lines, she gave us this choice A, which was correct. And her reason was, she kind of analyzed principle of fairness on a layman's perspective and on the choices given he ju she just saw that i'm having what all interested parties so for me to be fair i must cater for all the interested parties i asked her why did she select uh choice d the solution was very simple this was her answer uh, choice D basically was both for the only business end and customers. But remember, in any business, it is not always about customers and basically business, but we have other parties involved, right? So in this case, we find that the choice, the best choice will have been A, based on the principle of fairness. So we need to think through the potential impacts of our data used on all interested on all interested parties, on all interested parties. So in this case, the best choice would be choice A. And in this case, the main reason is you'll find that uh, uh, basically thinking through the potential uh, impacts of our data used on all interested parties applies to the principle of fairness in the unified ethical framework for data analytics. The principle of fairness in the unified uh, uh, ethical framework for big data analytics states that data analytics practitioners should ensure that their use of data does not result in unfair discrimination or bias against individuals or groups. Uh -huh. To achieve fairness, you'll find that practitioners should think through the potential impact of their data used on all interested parties, including individuals, groups, societies, community, etc. etc. So you'll find that in this case, we are not only talking about basically business and customers. So you'll find that this involves considering the potential risk. This involves basically considering uh, the potential risk, the potential risks and benefits of data use, as well as any unintended consequences that may arise. So that is very important for us to, to note. Right, that is uh, basically the best choice. Now, understanding other principles, if I told you to talk of a principle of sustainability, you'll find that uh, basically this principle emphasizes the importance of responsible data stewardship, including data quality, security, and longevity. Basically, this is what principle of sustainability. When you're talking about principle of transparency, ideally, you'll find that this principle basically involves or requires the data analytics practitioners be open and honest about their data use, including how data is collected, analyzed, and used. Uh -huh. Whereas the last principle, which normally term it as a principle of benefit, emphasizes the importance of creating value from data analytics 
for both the business and society as a whole. So you'll find that Molimo here has demonstrated for us all these, basically all the principles that you're having, all the principles that we are having, all the principles that you're having, all the principles that we are having in this bit here, in this question of ours. So you'll find that uh, in this case, of course, uh, the best choice, the best choice would be, the best choice, of course, would be the principle that we are talking about, the aspect you do with the uh, principle of what? Uh, principle of uh, fairness. That, of course, choice A will suit in very well. Choice A will suit in very well. Choice A will suit in very well. So uh, after understanding that bit, after understanding that bit, you'll find that uh, in the, all these other questions, you have these solutions in all of these questions, which maybe you can find it in our uh, theory revision uh, Q and A, which we are terming it as revision companion. So basically, that's how you are supposed to answer the question. And uh, let me just show you guys how this is demonstrated basically in our in our Q and A. Basically, uh, the revision uh, companion that Molimu is talking about. So, like whatever that we've answered, basically, this is uh, what we have here. You see the way we've uh, basically demonstrated it, December twenty twenty two. Section one, I'm having like question two. This is a question I've highlighted for you. Uh, basically, this is a, let me give you a correct highlight. This is a no color. So I'm just doing data science here. And in addition to that, what Molimu is also doing, I'm also explaining it for you here. You see, I'm also explaining it for you here. The same case with this case, um, we are going through the question the correct solution, I'm highlighting it for you, then I'm giving you an explanation, the reason why we have picked that choice. So all of this bit basically will apply, the same case we've seen it here. Uh, what I'm going to do basically, other than just giving you the correct choice, I'll also explain it for you, why you have selected that choice, and the effect of all these other choices again. So this is what we have, and basically, that is how you can always tend to work out this theory bit of data analytics, of business data analytics. Yeah. So these are what I wanted to share with you guys. And uh, of course, the same case will also apply to, uh, if at all you are to go to, uh, if at all you are to go to pilot paper, the same case, you also have uh, the same concept applies in this case. Pilot paper, yeah, the theory bit for pilot paper. You see, this is basically our pilot paper, right? Where in this case, you ask like, uh, which of the following choices provides the correct definition of data model? So what Molimo has done here, I'm giving you a solution of the best case scenario and also explaining it for you. Like in this case, pilot paper, right? So like if I told you to go on this, which of the following choices provides the correct definition of data model? We're having uh, basically all these choices, but the correct one is conceptual representation of data objects. I've explained it for you here, the reason why we are selecting that, the reason why you are selecting that. So basically these are what you're supposed to do get this model paper or rather get this uh, revision companion, it will really, really help you guys. Yeah, so to that point, thank you so much. And uh, in the event of any question relating to BDA, of course, you can always reach us out. Thank you guys and let us continue engaging. You have a nice time, thank you.